I know many of us were thrilled to see a whole section of the gynecologic cancer session at um, ASCO 2021 focused on endometrial cancer. We really saw a wide array of studies that were presented. The first was the TOTEM trial, which was asking a question of how intense should we be watching our patients during active surveillance? And what they did was they had two groups of patients with endometrial cancer, patients thought to be at low risk of recurrence, stage 1A, grade 1 to 2, or patients at high risk of recurrence. So um, grade uh, three, stage 1A, or stage 1B, or more. And they looked to see, and they randomized these patients, and how could we follow them? How do we manage their surveillance? And does it make a difference? So they had so-called intensive or minimalist follow-up. And you can imagine the intensive follow-up was more frequent visits, more frequent imaging, and even more frequent things like pap smears and such like that. Um, and they took both arms, both the low risk and the high risk to see, does one group benefit from a more intensive um, uh, surveillance plan than the other? And the bottom line, no more is not always better. They did find a high rate of compliance. Patients generally um, all showed up for their testing. They showed up for their visits, but it had no impact on overall survival. That was in the entire population, as well as when they teased out by risk. It didn't have an impact on relapse-free survival. And overall, it just didn't have an impact. So I think this helps us feel very um, good about having minimalist follow-up. Less is more for this patient population. Now, along the treatment side, we saw two really interesting targeted therapy trials for endometrial cancer. The first was the Victoria trial, which was looking at the addition of a drug called Vistucertib, which is an mTORC1-2 inhibitor, um, and they added that to anastrozole. The aromatase inhibitor. So patients were randomized. They treated a total of 73 patients, and they were randomized to either the nasrozole alone or the anastrozole in combination with the vistucertib. And the primary um, objective was actually progression-free rate at eight weeks. They did see an improvement in that progression-free rate between the combination arm of 67% versus 39% in anastrozole alone. Um, when they looked at things like response rate, duration of response, all of those seemed to be improved in the combination arm, including progression-free survival overall. Now, of course, with the additional agent, there were more adverse events, um, but I think the bottom line for this trial is it shows us that that PI3 kinase pathway is very important in endometrial cancer, and there is an opportunity to look at combinations with hormonal um, agents. We've seen this in prior studies, and I think we're just working on kind of picking and choosing the right strategy, the right combination of hormonal agents with a PI3 kinase um, pathway agent. And then finally, now for something completely different, um, we saw a presentation from the TAPER study. Now, the TAPER study is a non-randomized phase two basket trial in a community setting where they have 18 different opportunities for treatments across 85 different genomic targets. And this has been run by ASCO for some time. Now, they wanted to present the arm looking at pertuzumab and trastuzumab in patients with uterine cancer that had ERB2 aberrations or HER2 aberrations. Now, this savvy audience will know that we've been exploring agents that target HER2 for some time in uterine cancer, especially in patients with uterine serous tumors. So this was a really exciting trial. Now, what they found, they looked at disease control rate as well as objective response. And they found in um, 28 uh, evaluable patients, there was a 37% disease control rate. Now, 7% of patients did have an objective response. But what was intriguing is that despite the low response rate, those patients that did get benefit tended to stay on for um, a long period of time. We had patients on for 40 and 48 weeks. And overall survival was about 60 weeks in the um, entire population. So this shows us that this is a relevant um, opportunity for our patients. We probably haven't nailed down the right combination yet. Um, Dr. Nicholas Fader and colleagues are moving this combination forward with chemo in an upfront population of HER2 aberrant tumors. So perhaps that's where we're really going to get the most bang for our buck.